my name is the Walrus Jedi, and in this series, you will join me as we explore the Star Wars Galaxy's greatest creatures, from the Banthas of Tatooine to the Aklays on Felucia, and even to the dreaded Rancors of Dathomir, among other creatures. This is Star Wars Creatures with the Walrus Jedi. Episode 1, Banthas. If you like this video, then please consider liking and subscribing for more videos on species in the future and uh, other Star Wars videos on books, comics, and everything else. And you can let me know in the comment section down below what the next creature should be in uh, episode two and uh yeah so without further ado let's get to the bantha herds of woolly banthas inhabit the desert wastes of tatooine in the outer rim as well as the grasslands and plains of other worlds throughout the galaxy since banthas are found in such a large number of agricultural systems it is believed that early space settlers transported the species to new worlds Although largely domesticated on some planets, wild herds can still be found. There are several known varieties of banthas in existence, including the common bantha, Banta majoris, the smaller shy dwarf bantha, and the rangier slender dune bantha. One specific subtype of bantha is the Kashyyyk gray climber, which differs from its Tatooine cousin in that the gray climber has massive cranial bone plates in place of horns. It has also adapted to climbing through the evolution of articulated toes that can grip rosier trees. The common bantha is by far the most numerous, but as banthas are found on a multitude of worlds, more subspecies may yet be discovered. Generally used as beasts of burden, the tall, gentle creatures are intelligent, dependable, and trustworthy. They are extremely strong able to carry up to 500 kilos of cargo or five human-sized passengers, including a driver. Because of their rocking gait, many first-time bantha riders have been known to complain of motion sickness. Although banthas prefer to move at a slow pace, they can run at great speeds when necessary, and stories of bantha stampedes are commonplace on all the worlds they inhabit. Banthas are extremely adaptable, abiding comfortably in all sorts of climates, able to survive for weeks without food or water. From world to world, bantha subspecies vary in size, coloration, social grouping, behavior, and metabolic specifics. But one commonality is that, surprisingly, these most gentle giants are herbivores. On Tatooine, banthas live on meager sand lichen mats, found either in protected hollows or just under the sand. Due to their size and internal stores, they can live for nearly a month without sustenance. In addition to being beasts of burden, banthas are a valuable source of nourishment for many cultures. Bantha meat is edible, and their skin and long fur can be used for clothing. Bantha skin goods such as boots and luggage are expensive luxuries on some planets. Furthermore, Bantha bones and horns are carved by members of several cultures to make tools, ornaments, and toys. Banthas exhibit many of the traits typical of herd animals. Wild banthas have been known to gather their dead in bantha graveyards. When attacked, they usually flee, and most bantha species will only fight in defense of the herd and their young. In the event that they are trapped or when young banthas must be defended, Male banthas will form a circle around their calves and cows using their large tapering horns and three meter wide size to protect the herd. They strike by lowering their heads and ramming their large spiral horns into an attacker. Some cultures have taken advantage of the banthas horns and bulk by using domesticated breeds as beasts of war, spurring them to charge at foes and trample them underfoot. On Tatooine, woolly banthas have been left to roam free in the harsh desert climate, and the species has flourished. They are the transportation of choice for the native Tusken Raiders, 
who have a special and unique relationship with their mounts. Upon reaching the age of five, a Tusken Raider is teamed up with a young Bantha, and the two develop an emotional bond that lasts a lifetime. If its master dies, a widowed Bantha will often fly into a suicidal rage. The tribe then waits until the Bantha tires of its rampage, afterward turning it out into the wilderness to survive on its own. Usually, the unfortunate Bantha dies of grief and dehydration. Likewise, if the Bantha mount is the first to perish, the Tuscan Raider to whom it was bonded will become inconsolable to the point of ruthlessly attacking others in the clan or even taking his or her own life. If such Tuscan Raiders do not die from their despair, they are sent out into the desert on a vision quest to contact the spirit of their fallen Bantha partner. If their Bantha companion guides them to the afterlife, they will expire in the barren wastelands of Tatooine. If, however, their former mount wishes them to live, it will guide them to a new riderless Bantha, which then becomes their new companion. Tusken Raiders who return with a fresh mount are given high honor in their communities. All right, that is a bit about Banthas. Decent little bit of information on the Banthas. I didn't know that they were on other planets besides Tatooine, so pretty cool. Well, I guess that's that. That's the Bantha video. So you can let me know what you thought of this video in the comment section down below. And also, again, you can pick the next creature that uh, we're going to cover. So obviously, yeah, don't choose Bantha. And uh, yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, thanks for watching.